The following video is made possible by the EA Game Changers program, and it contains footage of the Battlefield 5 single player. If you don't wish to be spoiled and want to experience it all for yourself, click off this video now and wait till the launch of the game in mid-November. So today, I've got around 10 minutes of the Battlefield 5 single player in gameplay here for you. I'm going to give you some of my impressions over the top of each of the war stories to give you an understanding of what each story does. But don't worry, I'm not going to be spoiling the entire plot. Of course, there will be some details in here that you would otherwise learn by playing the war stories through, but I'm not going to spoil key parts for you. And instead, I'm going to be showing you out of order snippets of each war story. That way, hopefully, I limit as much of the story spoiling as possible. First of all, I want to start with Tirailleur, which was by far my favourite war story that I got to play. This focuses on Senegalese French colonial troops deployed to mainland France, and their directive is liberating it from occupying German forces. It's a homeland they've never set foot on before. Now you take on the role of Deme, and the story is told in retrospect. He's now wearied of his days in the French army as a tirailleur. In the story, you are the young Deme, and you take part in a massive infantry assault that sees you go up against German soldiers, defences and armour as you fight to liberate southern France in the later stages of World War II. Now, the reason I liked this war story so much is because it's reminiscent of my own multiplayer play style of choice in Battlefield games. All out infantry warfare, I'm mainly an infantry player, you fight across dangerous locations and you're liberating outposts as you go through. The location DICE created for this war story as well is simply astounding. It looks incredible. The colours of the leaves scattered across the forest ground really stand out as you pick off German soldiers, and then you just emerge into this large open battlefield where you fight through a huge concrete barricade, pushing towards a fortress that the Germans have built to keep out invading forces. The entire scene is just one I wish would become a multiplayer map at some point. I think that huge concrete barricade that splits up the map clean in two and would provide some really engaging gameplay, I think. Infantry being able to cross through the barricade, but vehicles maybe having to try and find another way or using explosives to create a route through it. I think it would offer some really quite diverse gameplay for Battlefield 5. Now, there were a few opportunities to try out some new weapons in this war story, plenty of them scattered around the map that you can go up to and switch from. You'll see some snippets here of the Sturmgewehr 1.5, the Shoshar machine gun, the MG42 and the MG34 are in there as well. Now, the Shoshar is not a weapon currently in Battlefield 5's multiplayer, but as we've seen from previous games in the franchise, single player content does indeed make it into multiplayer sometimes, and I imagine we'll see that again here in Battlefield 5. And of course, the Shoshar was a weapon we saw in Battlefield 1, but it does handle a little bit differently because, of course, gunplay is completely different in Battlefield 5. Next up on the list, we have Under No Flag. This is a British war story focusing on the SBS, the Special Boat Service. This was a unit tasked with some really rather reckless missions in World War II, and they asked operatives to think on their feet to really get things done. You join Billy Bridger. He's a fictional criminal who's been caught trying to rob a bank, the same bank, three times back home in London. George Mason, the British officer you see alongside young Bridger, takes Bridger into his unit to North Africa, where you set up a takedown of a Luftwaffe airbase. Bridger has a knack for explosives, and these take centre stage in the mission. Playing through this war story, it becomes abundantly clear that it takes on classic British banter and light-hearted humour and manages to spin it into missions that either require stealth or complete carnage, and the choice is totally up to you. The setup of the missions is geared towards stealth, I'd say, but there's nothing stopping you from going all guns blazing. And of course, with the centre stage being taken by explosives, sometimes you are going to make 
quite a bit of noise. When I played through, I opted for a bit of both wherever the action required it, but you'll find lots of weapons that you can use are geared towards a more stealthy role. You'll actually find the Commando Carbine in this war story, which is the Delisle Carbine that DICE showed off at the end of their most recent Dev Talks episode, where they focused on weapons and what we might see in the Tides of War. That weapon is already active here in the single player. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get to play all the way through this war story, and the mission was cut off after a certain point, but it's clear the entire war story is all about showing how the war affected everybody. Billy Bridger was taken from a prison cell all the way to North Africa to blow up Nazi planes because he had an aptitude for creating explosives. Not because he really wanted to, but because he was needed for the war effort. And the relationship between the two characters at first seems quite standoffish and abrupt, but as the story moves on, that changes and you really get to see how these two work together. This is the only war story under no flag of the four coming to Battlefield 5 that will be spoken in English. The rest are spoken in their native language. Of course, under no flag, English is the native language. The others have subtitles. And DICE did this to sort of create a closer connection between the characters and the actions that they're taking. Not to mention, it does create a better representative scenario. I really can't imagine that the Senegalese colonial troops who land in southern France know much English, and German soldiers in the last Tiger War story speaking English would be rather jarring, I think. And moving on to the last war story that I can show you today, this is Nordlis. This we've already seen and heard much more about, but to give you a quick rundown, this story focuses on Norwegian resistance fighters and their attempts to sabotage and destroy the heavy water plant that Germans are using to produce materials that they need to make nuclear weapons. Now you play as Solvig, a young commando, and you need to rescue your mother who's been captured by the German guards of the plant. You play through the war story and you end up realising that the fight is not just about trying to liberate your country, but also to try and keep your family alive. This is a proper stealth mission. It's the direct opposite of Tirailleur, really. And the idea is to move through the levels unnoticed and unseen, trying not to attract too much attention. Now, there's plenty of enemies hanging around at each of the points, and taking them out silently will make things a little bit easier for you. One of my favourite parts of this story is where you have to traverse through a ravine and a mountainside at night, under the cover of darkness in the freezing cold Norwegian temperatures. The mountain is secured by German forces who've lit fires at each of their outposts to keep them warm, and the only way to survive the cold and not die from hypothermia is to warm up at each of these outposts. But of course you need to stay out of sight and earshot of the German guards who will start attacking you if they see you. This level is perfect for the use of your throwing knives, picking off enemies silently from a distance and then moving in on outposts to warm up, maybe even rearm and potentially pick up different weapons that you might want to use. Of all of the three war stories and the prologue that I got to play, despite this outpost fire level reminding me a lot of a mission from Bad Company 2 single player, which is my favourite Battlefield game, this was my least favourite war story. I'm genuinely just not a fan of stealth missions, and with Battlefield being such a chaotic experience in multiplayer, this feels very, very far away from being a proper Battlefield mission. That's just how I feel, but in general, there was nothing wrong with the story or the progression of the character that you get to play. I'm sure a lot of players will enjoy this one. There's plenty of guys out there, I'm sure, who will enjoy a good stealth mission, but this one just wasn't for me. At the event, I was also allowed to play the prologue mission, but I can't show you any footage of that, which is a shame, because it offered a lot of different elements of World War II thrown into one mission. It gives you lots of situations to encounter, such as a sniper in Algeria in 1943, a German tank assault in Libya, an air combat situation between German and British fighters, and even a cinematic ground assault as an allied soldier in northern France. It throws a lot at you in a short space of time, but as you play through it, it sets you up nicely for the rest of the single player. I just kind of wish that I could actually show it to you, because it was quite enjoyable to play. 
And no, unfortunately, I didn't get to play any of The Last Tiger, which is the German war story. This is coming after the launch of Battlefield 5. It wasn't ready for us to play at the event, so at this time, I don't have any new details for you. So, to sum up, the Battlefield 5 single player is... Well, it's single player. It's something I think everybody should play and experience because it does indeed highlight some of those lesser known or spoken about aspects of World War II, but arguably it's not the main focus of players of Battlefield games. The fact one story is coming post-launch potentially means more could come in the future. That would be interesting, but I'm not 100% sure DICE will want to do that, instead choosing to focus on the multiplayer. We're going to have to wait for more information there. But thank you very much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed your very first look at the war stories coming to Battlefield 5 and some sneaky looks at some weapons as well. Make sure you leave some comments down below in the comment section and I'll try and answer some. But until next time, my name is Westy and I'll catch you guys in the next video.